Welcome back to the Metal Exchange. Justin and Chris here with you for another week, and uh, this week something a little bit different when we discuss Dissection's Storm of the Lights Bane from November of 1995. But before we get there, how are you doing, bud? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, this was uh, this was a struggle this yeah, okay. for me. So, all right. Well, we, sometimes it's good to go get out of our comfort zones a little bit. And uh, if I had gone to another Freedom Call album or something like that, I think it would have gotten a little a little stale. So I, I like to throw a curveball every now and again. Um, before we before we get into it and and dive headfirst in, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that I heard this week. Um, that I thought were were, no, were noteworthy for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is a band called Knights of the Realm. Uh, they had released a self titled album um, earlier this year, I guess, and it was really, I guess, in the vein of just like straight up heavy metal. I I, I don't really know how else to describe it other than um, just metal, right? Like straight up uh, accessible. Uh, heavy metal, and it, I think it involved one of the um, former drummers from Tiamat, the, uh, the the and also uh, one of the guys from Eclipse. So I thought it was just kind of a unique blend of what they were. What, what you know sounds nothing like Tiamat, sounds nothing like Eclipse, but it somehow really really worked well. Uh, and, and I'll definitely post a track of theirs this week. Good, 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 just straight up metal. Uh, wor- definitely worth hearing. Uh, another album uh, that really blew me away was a. Uh, band called Dawn of Solace. They had released an album earlier this month called Flames of Perdition. I'd never heard of these guys. Um, and it was, I, I guess I'll call it like melodic doom metal. Uh, certainly has that like feel of, of doom metal, but the way they do it, it's, it's quite catchy and quite melodic and quite something I would gravitate towards. Probably my favorite doom metal album that was released this year, um, if we're going to lump it in that category. So definitely worth checking that out. And one other thing which I thought was interesting, there was a band that used to play here in New York uh, at Lemoore's before the club in Brooklyn closed. And I probably saw this band open up for, I don't know, at least a half dozen other musical acts, and they're called October Thorns. Uh, they were a progressive metal band that they released one EP uh, back uh, in the late 90s. And again, I just used to see these guys opening up for everybody else uh, here on the local circuit, they have released a music video and are apparently releasing a new album with a bunch of the older material. The album is called Circle Game, and I believe it's due out early next year. Um, when this popped up, I couldn't believe it because they, they released a video for this track and they used a lot of the old footage from the live shows back in the day. Um, and kind of made a music video out of it, I guess, uh, before the album comes out, as I said. And it was just really cool to see because I haven't really listened to these guys in a while. But excellent stuff, and uh, I'll post that as well during the week. It's, it's definitely worth hearing. And, and for TSO fans out there, their bass player uh, of October Thorns actually toured with TSO uh, for a number of years. So um, there is a little bit of a connection there as well. I, have you ever heard of these guys? Yeah, um Believe it or not, I had met Dave Z, um, you know, after a, a Trans Siberian Orchestra show, and he had mentioned that he was in another band called October Thorn. So I, I checked out the, I think I had one song from that original album that they did back in the day. Um, I think the song was actually Circle Game, um, which was a really good tune. And, and I, I would go on to end up, becoming friends with Dave, uh, Dave Pando, who's their guitar player, uh, through Prog Power. Um, and we would always, we kind of, bo- uh, bonded on, uh, just, um, our extensive knowledge of sabotage. So, um, uh, yeah, it was really sad to see that, uh, Dave Z passed away in that, uh, horrible bus accident, um, when he was on tour with Adrenaline Mob, uh, in 2017. So, uh, yeah, I'd be curious to hear, um, you know what they're what, if they're coming up with the uh, new material. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to hear that actually. Yeah, it's it's been a long time coming. Um, the the track or the video they posted is nothing new. It's kind of just a more polished version of the original song. But apparently, there's new material to go along with it. So, uh, needless to say, I'm curious, and I'll, I'll definitely be checking that out in the uh, in the months to come. Um, but in the meantime, anything uh, strike your ear this week? Yeah, uh, a couple of things. Um, Eldritch's new album, uh, Eos, 
came out um, on Friday, uh, and um, I haven't had a chance to listen to too much of it, but I did get to hear their fantastic cover of um, Bon Jovi's Runaway, which is my favorite Bon Jovi song, so that was super cool. Um, and then also uh, Amaranth released a new single, PVP. Uh, I, th- I may have mentioned it last week, I don't remember. Um, uh, Star One put out their second single from their upcoming Fate of Man album it's the title track and it features uh britney slays from unleash the archers so um that's a really cool tune I, I enjoyed that quite a bit and um also the all-female japanese uh power metal band love bites um released a new single called nameless warrior which is going to be uh featured on their upcoming compilation album in the beginning which uh, i believe they um remastered all of their older tracks but uh this is a new um, original track that will be uh, included on the album with all the older stuff. So um, also, uh, and I also noticed that. Um, well, no, I, is that not new? Um, I thought did Persephone come drop a new single? They this did. Week? They did. I, I believe it or not, I've yet to hear it, but I saw that that had dropped. I think about a week ago, if I'm not mistaken. I think I have it dated wrong in my. Um, in my iTunes, because it says 2020 for some reason. No, it's, de- um, it's definitely new. Um, a friend of mine had actually pointed out that they had dropped a new single, but I have not yet heard it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear that. I think after we're done, I'll probably take a listen, because I've always enjoyed their um, unique take on, on uh, I guess we'll call it progressive death metal, for, for lack of a better term. That's what it says in my iTunes. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so let's get to uh, let's get to uh, dissection for a second, and let me just kind of set the stage as to why I chose this band, why I chose this album. Because um, you hate me. Yeah, I, I tried to tor- I tried <laughs> to torture you for I, for, for 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 lack of a better uh, for lack of a better term. Kidding aside. I wanted to do a black metal album for a long time, and I originally wanted to go with some Emperor. Or even some immortal, just because of uh, the, <laughs> the the many memes that are r- running around social media and continue to you know kind of haunt that band. But the reason I chose the Dissection album was because they are one of the few black metal bands that are actually described as like melodic black metal. Now, after hearing the album, I think you'll probably take umbrage with that. But they call it melodic black metal because there's it's not quite that. It's not as abrasive, I guess, as some of that early black metal stuff from the early 90s. Um, They are experimenting with different things here. And a lot of people actually say that they blend melodic death metal, which was huge in Sweden at the time, with that black metal sound from the from the early 90s. Um, and, and the reason these guys kind of got on my radar was a, a friend of mine who had toured with Ghost Ship Octavius and who's in his own black metal band. His name is Jacob, and he's... Uh, He's in a black metal band called Kavain, K-V-A-E-N. He had posted this on his Facebook, and he basically said that Storm of the Lights Beam is the best black metal album of all time. And that's really how they got on my radar, because I had never heard of them. Um, so I went back, I did a little digging, I picked up the album, and I listened to it a couple of times. And it really never clicked, and I thought this would actually force myself to do a deep dive into this album and I appreciated certain things about it when I had first heard it, but I thought it would be a really interesting, uh, deep dive to do this with you. Someone who has little to no, uh, black metal, either love or, or knowledge, to be honest with you, um, to, to kind of listen to this for the first time. The, the band has a very unique history to say the least. They are no longer, uh, doing their thing. And I'm sure we'll get to that, um, momentarily. But what were your overall impressions of this disc when you when you heard it, and, and I guess as it evolved during the week? Well, I, I didn't hate it. I mean, I'll say that. Like, I didn't think it was bad. Um, I just didn't think that anything like stood out particularly either. Like, and I found that. I mean, maybe it's just from an untrained ear, but I just found that most of it kind of just bled together and and sounded the same. But I, I didn't dislike it. I mean, the vocals didn't really bother me. Um, I think I've got reached a point where like I can kind of stomach some of these harsher vocals and they're definitely like, it's definitely a type of music where like I can see myself kind of tapping my foot at it, which I don't know. I would have been able to say about like the anthrax album that we went over, which was like one of the ones I didn't like as much that we've reviewed. Um, 
So I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I have really like a ton of of, of detailed comments about it. I noticed that there's like a a very uh, heavy emphasis on like double bass drums and like super fast uh, guitar riffs. And um, I mean, I, I really didn't like. I really just didn't dislike it at all. Like it just was kind of there for me. I, nothing, I thought like listening to it a bunch of times, maybe something would would click for me, like you had said. And, and it, I guess it just didn't. Um, but it wasn't like unenjoyable either. It just was just kind of there for me. So it's interesting you say that. The, the part, another reason I chose this was it's it's eight songs on the album, but there's really an intro track and an outro track. So the meat of the album, the the middle of the Oreo cookie, if you will, it's only six tracks, uh, longer tracks by by and large, and and a lo- quite a bit to digest there. Um, but what stood out to me was not so much the songs themselves, but certain portions of songs which really jumped out, and I, I guess kind of made the album for me because um, I'll, I'll I'll basically say it this way. Uh, the reason I, I gravitated towards it was it just provided a nice change of pace for me, and it was just different from some of the other stuff that I've been listening to for years or decades, even. So Barney? I, I say it again. <laughs> Were you listening to Barney, and you just yeah. like the exact opposite of Barney. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I just found it to. Pro- I, I think albums like this provide a nice contrast to some of the other stuff, which is obviously very enjoyable and obviously very accessible, but just a little bit different. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll just kind of jump right in. The, the album starts with a, um, I guess I'll just call it a, a, an intro track, a nearly two minute, um, instrumental called at the fan, uh, at the fathomless depths. And basically what it is, it's a slow guitar riff, uh, a, 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 that, kind of just proceeds like a march when the drum comes in and I, I guess the only way i could describe it is dark and cold I, I i mean it really i guess sets the stage for what this album is although in and of itself it just is kind of like this march to war uh it would, would be the best way i could describe it yes i i <laughs> i agree with you um man i i had like a a very uh a difficult uh, wor- work week um, towards the end of the week and like putting this album on while I was like head spinning from a work scenario. I was like, Oh my God, this is like giving me anxiety. Like <laughs> <laughs> you really have to be like in a certain headspace. I think I actually, I was, I listened to the album again this morning, just kind of laying in bed. And I think it was uh, a little bit like easier to, to digest when I wasn't dealing with like, like professional stress at the same yeah, time. I, I, I can certainly appreciate that. And I can also understand why somebody would listen to this in the wrong mood and absolutely like run in the opposite direction. <laughs> um, I'm totally with you there. Uh, just going into like, I guess like the meat of the album, it really kicks off with a song called Night's Blood. And and when I say picks up, I mean, it picks up absolutely immediately. Uh, you have this really fast drum fill followed like by this brutally fast um, guitar riff. My issue, I, I have some issues with this track and it's actually one of my least favorite on the album. It's right off, right off the bat, you can tell that the production here is kind of muddy and it lacks the melody of of some of uh the others bands like that i guess are in the genre my issue here was the the use of blast beats that they use i'm not a huge fan of blast beats and and thankfully they do use them sporadically uh but that to me just over and over again is enough to kill to kill a lot of albums and i'm happy that they don't use it as much on this particular record um what were your thoughts on the vocals when they kick in? Because it's definitely different. I mean, it wasn't unexpected. I mean, I've heard at least enough black metal to kind of know what the, what kind of um, vocals are are to be expected. Um, So I didn't really dislike them. They weren't like, um, I don't really know how like you would describe black metal vocals versus maybe like more like cannibal corpse death metal vocals but to me like this is a lot more palatable than than that like real guttural kind of um uh, i don't know i i don't really mind it um it's just as uh kind of there it might be from watching those youtube videos of the the vegan black metal chef um <laughs> but uh i don't know I, it's not my it's not i'm never gonna claim that that's my favorite style of vocal in the world but it doesn't really bother me either 
it's not as abrasive. I think it's, I don't want to say it's accessible, but it, there's almost like a comedic value to it for me. I, I'm sure that they would obviously take umbrage with that. But to <laughs> me, there's like a, almost a comedic element to it, which is kind of, I, I guess, in a sense, ironic given, given um, how this band would ultimately um, come, come to, come to fruition and ultimately uh, fade away. The reason I say that is the, the main guy here, the vocalist and lead guitarist, is a guy by the name of John uh, Notvite, and and he he has a little bit of a history. After this album comes out, he's actually charged in connection with a murder um, of a uh, let's just say that somebody who's living in Sweden at the time is a homosexual. He's charged with in connection with the murder. He's ultimately sentenced, and, he, and I think he serves like a seven-year prison sentence in connection with um, the 1997 murder. I, actually, I think it might have been a 10-year prison sentence. He served seven years, which right off the bat I thought was very low. But that's just, you know, in ter- instead of turning this into the comparative prison system, prison system podcast, I'll just say he serves his time for murder. He gets out, and, and shortly thereafter he would actually commit suicide himself, which is uh, another, I guess, tale into the uh, – the mind of this individual, unfortunately. Um, but his vocals, and I'll, and I'll just stick to that for now, his vocals were actually pretty good insofar as I, I could make out some of what he was saying, right? Because some of this stuff, you can't make out a word of, of, at least for me. I actually could understand what he was saying for parts of it. So kudos to that. And his guitar riffs are uh, are pretty brutal. I, I will say that as far as this song goes, the second half of the song blows away the first half. I thought it was a nice change of pace. It's a little bit slower than the rest. Um, and then eventually it'll pick up and get fast again, again, towards the very end. But what, what saved the track for me is really the fact that it wasn't just brutally speedy throughout. And it was that kind of ebbs and flow that I could kind of get, get jump on board with. Um, not my favorite track on the disc by any means, probably one of my least favorites, but you know, uh, certainly a representative opener for a black metal album. Yeah, I mean, it definitely gets the the ball rolling on what to what to expect um, for the next you know forty minutes or so. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I didn't really have uh, any major problem with this song. I don't, I don't really wasn't my, my, one of my favorites either. But um, then again, like I'm not sure if you played a random track from this album for me, like three hours from now, if I'll be able to tell which one it was anyway. So that's fair. Unless, I, I think that's it's the fair. last song. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that, that too. I think there is one track on here that really does pop, but we haven't gotten there yet. Um, the next track is a track called unhallowed and it starts off with another one of those brutal riffs. Um, a very similar pacing in terms of the last track, at least at the start, but then there's like a dramatic change. And, and there's actually portions of this track that remind me of more of children of Bodom or like a speed metal band, which I thought was a really nice, like, contrast um it was just wild and unexpected and i definitely didn't um expect to, to hear anything from like a you know a finnish you know power metal band or what have you but i heard elements of it here um i'll also say that there was this extended solo about halfway through the song which is really really awesome because i think it kind of pops over the dark riffs that are kind of underneath it i, I actually think it was like a really simple touch but effective um and the biggest thing I can say is this is about a seven and a half minute song and it doesn't feel quite like seven and a half minutes, which I guess is a compliment to the song with a really, really awesome outro. And I think the drumming stands out for the first time on the album because again, while, while the first track has so many blast beats, this was just really solid drumming. Um, and I thought it should be, uh, definitely mentioned the drummer on here is uh, a guy by the name of Oli Omen. Um, I wasn't familiar with him. Apparently, he uh, stopped drumming uh, a number of years ago after getting hurt. But he uh, – nice job on this track. I, I, I want to commend him for that. Yeah, I think the drumming – I mean, for me, it stood out on most of the album, especially just the that, ba- that bass drum. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't really find that this track was terribly different from the previous one. Um but like, I really do like the way that the the music like comes in, like just you know, guns a blazing. And um, if I if I think that if if it was more like um, if it was clean vocals, I would enjoy this a lot more. Um, I think the vocals, as much as they don't really bother me and I don't really dislike them, they don't grab me either. So I feel like I'm definitely digging the musical portion of the band more so than the vocal portion. Um, 
Like, and like you said, the song has like a really a cool guitar solo in the middle, which I really liked. And like, there's definitely elements of things that I really like, but um, the, the things that I don't really like kind of drag it down. In, in short order, I think we're going to have to do one of the earlier Isan solo albums because it's really a nice blend of that black metal sound, but there's also clean vocals in there as well, which I think that you can definitely appreciate. And his cleans are fantastic. I'm curious if that would actually like really resonate with you because it becomes like the best of both worlds at that point. So something to, uh, something to consider. Um, the next track on the album, I- I'm going to go out on a limb and say is, my track of the week. And, and the reason I say that this is actually one of the most, I guess, iconic black metal sang- songs of all time. And I didn't realize that when I went to listen to the album, but after doing a little bit of research, uh, where dead angels lie is, is just an absolute classic in the genre. It starts off slower. And I, I think that that is a nice contrast to the two tracks that precede it. It, it really cool. Um, Really cool riff and drum fills to start the song and a very discernible change of pace. Um, by far the best quote unquote verses on the album, just in terms of the, uh, I, I guess being memorable and being different and having it stand out. Uh, and, and the guitar work in between the vocal lines are just absolutely awesome. And I would dare I say that this is the track that puts the melodic in the melodic black metal. Um, and I'd be almost surprised if it wasn't your track of the week as well, just because of the fact that it's something that's kind of accessible, at least in the grand scheme of this thing. Well, you hit the nail on the head because um, I thought this was the most uh, memorable song on the album and the one that stuck out. Um, so, yeah, it, it would be my song of the week as well. In, a, in an experience where, like, it sounded like 45 minutes of basically listening to one long <laughs> scream fest, um, this was one that I definitely, like, perked up my ears and was like, oh, yeah, like that little, uh, that, that guitar riff and, and that, the chorus. And um, I, I think it, it stood out a little bit more than, than the rest, um, had a little bit more of a personality, I guess, uh, compared to the rest of the album. So, yeah, you were, you, definitely nailed it on that one yeah it's it's i mean there's there's elements of here which are kind of cheesy at one point there's like this horrific scream that's let out towards the end of the track it almost reminds you of like a horror movie sound oh my god it was like blood curdling yeah but it's like and it's cheesy but like i guess it kind of provides a nice touch in this whole thing um and then lastly there's this acoustic guitar section which i thought was a really nice contrast to some of the stuff that's come before it on the album um i love this tune i think it's a really really good tune and i think that for people that have never heard black metal there's a reason why I think that this is like a great place to start, right? Like this is something that people can listen to and be like, all right, this is not quite as extreme as I thought it might be. And then you go back and you play a song like, uh, you know, nice blood, right? Like I, it would be, I think you, this was like kind of dipping your toes into the black metal pool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I might, you know, swim a couple laps and then go back to the power metal ocean. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it, it's always good to, listen to something a little bit different and like i said like this wasn't really um a slog for me in any way it just was uh it just was there like indistinguishable right like it's 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 good for what it is it's just it's you really have to be um kind of digging deep to find the different nuances between some of these tracks but that one in particular i think is different and stands out amongst the rest yes i absolutely uh agree with you there uh, the, the next track we get to is uh, Retribution, Storm of the Lights Bane, which is really just the title track on the album. And here again, it's starting out with those blast beats, which I just um, 
I'm not a huge fan of. This to me was more of a death metal track and it, than it was a black metal track. Um, the sh- it's definitely the shortest of the of the major tracks on the album. Uh, and and quite frankly, until the vocals kicked in, I wouldn't have even guessed that it's a black metal song. Right to me, this was like a death metal song through and through. Not very memorable. Um, although I do have to say that the guitar solo was awesome and it kind of reminded me of like Castlevania a little bit. Um, but it's just it wasn't a memorable track for me, and it, I could kind of take it or leave this one. Yeah, I even I even get like a little bit of like a thrash element from the guitar work as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean this kind of goes into the pile for me with everything else. It's like again, I don't, I didn't dislike it. I don't think I disliked any songs on this album, but um, I didn't really love any of them either. So, um, but yeah, this is kind of more for me, just kind of more along the 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 same lines as as the you know the previous tracks, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really do wonder, like, if, if, you know, you listen to more and more and more of this kind of stuff, if it really, like, certain elements really start to pop more um, when you're, you know, starting to understand the little idiosyncrasies of the genre, which um, I, I admittedly don't, so. Yeah, I, I, I totally hear that. Um, I, I think the next track is another one of those, like, unique tracks where it's, distinguishable and i and that's why for me it's probably the second best song on on the album and that's thorns of crimson depth this is like the epic on the album right this is the longest track it's uh over eight minutes long it's got a lot here and there's elements of other bands uh, here as well the intro is awesome and it almost reminds me of like blind guardian with the way the, the guitar sounds which i thought was really really cool and a nice touch and then eventually once the other instruments kind of jump on board there's a bit of a gallop here right that we always talk about this is the one that you can kind of move your toe and your toes to and i i can get on board with this and again even though it's eight minutes it really didn't feel that way for me um in my opinion the choruses have almost a bit of like this modern doom metal sound like i referenced earlier when i was talking about um some of the bands we've been listening to recently this is the one i want to headbang to and and probably there's something like beautiful about it even though it's obviously very dark and haunting yeah, I, I like this one too, and I agree. I like I like that it didn't start out just right, out, like 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 just crazy right off the bat. Like there is actually that kind of like you said, like that really kind of quiet, haunting guitar, and and I definitely agree with you on on that Blind Guardian uh, comparison. Um, yeah, this one was one of the better ones for me as well. Um, maybe just because the vocals don't kick in until a little bit <laughs> further down, but. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just another. Uh, it's it's. I mean, it's it's more of the same for me. I think this one's just a little bit. It stands out a little bit more than the others, and and I don't really seem to mind that it's a, a, it's a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I mean, and again, like towards the end, it does that quiet. I don't know if that's like a, a trope of black metal where like things quiet down for a little while, and then ju- and then you know, like oh yeah. Yeah, I, I think actually a number of times I thought the track was was kind of coming to a close and then it would just jump back in again. And be but like, it needs it because it can't go a thousand miles an hour forever. And and you know it's interesting. This this track has a bit of a symphonic metal sound in sections. There's other parts that remind me of a Mana Marth and and like that whole like almost folky sound to it. And and then I even hear some Mana War on here as well. I feel like they just kind of threw the kitchen sink at this one. Um, and arguably arguably the best vocals on the album are, are in this track. Awesome final chorus, very epic and grandiose sounding. Um, really good tune. I like this one. I, I feel like, I mean, tell me if you agree, but I feel like some of the acoustic guitar sections, they remind me of, of like old Metallica acoustic guitar for whatever reason. I mean, it just, yeah, I, can hear I that. get that kind of feeling of, of that 80s Metallica um, kind of vibe that you get from some of their, the slower songs or some of the slower portions of of songs that they do. So or like the beginning of fight fire with fire, like the, the, right. Like, yeah, something like that. It just kind of has a similar tone to me. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I definitely agree with you that there seems to be different. It's not just black metal. There's definitely elements of doom and elements of thrash and elements of death metal. And, and um, I get why it's considered like melodic black metal because it's not, it definitely does have a bit of, of melody to it. And I agree that it's a good, it was probably a good call to go with this uh, band rather than a, than an immortal or an emperor right off the bat. Um, probably like a good 
way, a good appetizer to get into things. So um, I feel like it'll probably make it a little bit easier <laughs> to stomach some of the, the, the more traditional black metal bands in the future. We'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, like this. we'll give you a little time, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, the penultimate track, the real, you know, final track on this thing is, is Soul Reaper, a, a track that kind of reminds me of Night's Blood. I, I, uh, very fast, very muddy, um, blast beats throughout. I'm not a huge fan of the verses. And, and although I like the bridge, um, you know, there's no real chorus on here. It's, it's, it's well placed at the end of the album. We always talk about track placement. To me, this is a, not a very memorable track. I think that the best like kind of part of the song is like the guitar effects during the instrumental portion, but it's not that long. Um, Although I will say it has a bit of like this wanderlust feel to it, which I do appreciate and enjoy. But other than that, this track really just didn't do much for me. Kind of good where it is at the end and and, and does not hold a candle to, to the track that came before it. Right. I, I, I if, if I can kind of like blank out the, the vocals when I listen to a song like this, the guitar really does remind me of, of Children of Bodom where it's kind of that speedy, thrashy de- that death metal that um i still to this day i'm kind of shocked that i ended up really liking after not being much of a, a death metal fan for the beginning of my years as a metal fan but um i definitely i'm glad you mentioned them earlier because there's definitely a little bit of, of that kind of um that just like fast uh aggressive kind of guitar um style which i definitely appreciate um but yeah, I, I agree with you. This is kind of more along the lines of Night's Blood as well. That that opening, uh, the first like long, long track, and um, there's a cool p- kind of part in the in the middle where like there's like an acoustic guitar playing while the drums are going ape shit, and like <laughs> it's, it. I find myself really gravitating towards some of these like uh, instrumental pockets because um, it's just like I, I almost want to say I would enjoy this more in a live setting, just because I feel like you would you kind of get enveloped in the sound and, and the people around you and everything. And I feel like with a couple of drinks in me, like I would just, I would rock out to this kind of thing. So it's, it's funny you mentioned that another band that I had on my radar and I almost chose it for our first black metal album as well as a band called Carrick Angren. I don't think I've ever sent you a song of theirs, but they are a very symphonic black metal band. And I saw them on 70,000 tons having had very little exposure to them. And I could not believe how awesome they were live. Maybe it was the couple of beers, maybe the fact that um, I just thought it was a great performance with the energy and everything else. But I think that when you're kind of in the atmosphere, it actually resonates a lot better than when you're sitting at your desk doing work or kind of have your mind on other things. I, I I will say this, and I'll say this in advance of whenever we go on 70,000 tons again, whenever that's a thing, I implore you, go check out one or two of the better black metal bands on the, on that boat, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well you, it will be received. Yeah, I would be very up for that, and, and to be honest with you, like, like you said, like there's a difference between sitting at a desk underwriting mortgages and listening to black metal and there is standing next to a guy wearing a kilt drinking meat out of a horn yeah so, <laughs> it's a little bit of a different atmosphere i'm sure although yeah. if your boss does that more power to her I'm, i'd love to see that just the same yeah well i mean she might be but i work from home so i have no <laughs> idea <laughs> uh that's that's hysterical um album ends with a, a piano outro that kind of puts a bow on it called no dreams uh breed in breathless sleep very cool way to end the album. Beautiful, hauntingly, uh, almost like a funeral procession out of the album uh, with just this piano. Uh, really cool. I, I thought it was a nice touch um, and, and kind of puts a bow on it with, with that intro march that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, as like once I had listened to the album the first time, I kind of like was able to use this as my way of knowing that like the album was finished uh, when I would listen to it later on in the week. And I really do think it, it, it's such a, it's such a uh, dichotomy to the rest of the album where you, you guys had like this, this, this black metal uh, extravaganza of like blazing fast guitars and drums and everything. And these like harsh vocals. And then it's just kind of like, all right, now we're going to give you a little like death lullaby to, to kind of calm you down and let you know that the, uh, that the 45 minutes of craziness have come to an end. 
That's uh, well well said, and, and I guess puts a nice bow on it. Um, just to talk about some of the accolades for a second, just so that you know it's it's not just me. Um, metal Hammer has this is one of the 20 best black metal albums of the 90s. Uh, in what can only be described as, as perhaps the biggest surprise of them all, LA Weekly Magazine says that this is one of the 10 best metal albums you must hear before you die. It actually comes in at number two. I would have never ever guessed that. I thought that that wow. was, um, like really big acc- accolades. And then, uh, Terrorizer Magazine, not only is it one of the most important albums of the nineties, but it came in as the number eight black metal album, uh, ever. So, I mean, again, you're talking about rarefied air here. Uh, I, I had a chance just very briefly, um, in, in what was otherwise a, a kind of a busy week for me to listen to parts of their debut album that had come out two years before called the somber lane. And here was, it was actually really interesting because I don't know that it was quite as quote unquote melodic as this album, but they also deviate a little bit from that black metal sound and go into more of like almost a traditional heavy metal sound in parts of that album. Um, so I thought that that was cool because it was just a little bit something different there. Um, but I, 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 I will definitely give that album a full listen. But these guys were a two and done, right? Like after, after, um, the singer and songwriter gets out of jail, he reforms the band in 2004. They do a bunch of live shows. They record a DVD and ultimately he, you know, takes his own life a couple of years later. And that is the end of this band. So not a band we'll be seeing live anytime soon for sure. And, and this is kind of the end of them, but they have left a indelible mark, I guess, on the black metal scene because people are still heralding this as some of the best black metal that's ever made. So. Um, I guess that's kind of the biggest testament that that uh, the band and the legacy that this band has left, which is um, still paving the way 25 years later. Yeah, I mean, I I, I suppose uh, I suppose so. <laughs> I, I <laughs> haven't heard enough of other bands to really like you know rate them. You know, what do I think of them versus Immortal or Emperor or even like you know Eson solo albums stuff like that. Um, but uh, definitely. Um, a cool way to, you know, like you said, dip my toe in the pool, if you will. Now, I have to ask you, having digested this, uh, you know, or at least tried to digest this on a scale of one to ten, what is this album getting? Uh, I give it a six. Um, you know, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I, I can't say that it was, like, unenjoyable. It just wasn't particularly, um, you know, wonderful. Um, but, like, there are definitely elements that I thought were interesting. Um I was never bored. I mean, <laughs> that says anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, I definitely get why it, it's well received, and I didn't think it was. Um, I didn't think it was awful, but um, you know, it, it's. I, I I would say it's slightly above average for me. I guess better than Anthrax. Yeah, I don't remember what I gave Anthrax. That was a solid five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I feel like I enjoyed this a little bit more than that. Um, I think there was just a little bit more going on. That was my style of of music. Um, and there was melodies in this one. So they, <laughs> that, that'll I do it. Hearing in the anthrax album. For, for, for me, it's a 6.75. I, 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 again, I don't have the strongest knowledge base and they are definitely better than a lot of the black metal that I've heard. I still prefer bands like emperor to these guys, but I can certainly understand why this album is held in such high regard. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't, it wasn't um, something I'm going to go, gravitate back towards tomorrow um but it's something that i will definitely play again in the future so it it provides that nice contrast which i i do seem to crave the older i get so there's that um before we get to your album for next week um which i'm very curious to hear a couple of notes um the first a little bit more of a somber note uh, Big Big Train, a progressive rock band from the UK, um, which is really kind of taking over the progressive rock scene um, over the last 13 years or so. Their singer and uh, multi-instrumentalist um, member David Longton has passed away uh, unexpectedly at the age of 56. I, I, I can tell you that I first heard of these guys when their debut album came out. And over the years, I've seen so much great press about this band. Um, not only in terms of, uh, you know, the prog fans, but like even, even like prog magazine, which is a great publication out of the UK. They always have, uh, you know, different articles and 
um, interviews with these guys. They are one of the more successful prog rock bands, I would say, that have come out of the genre in the last you know decade or two. Really devastating news. Apparently, uh, he was involved in an, some sort of an accident in the early hours of, of this past Friday morning, uh, survived by his wife and, and daughters. He's passed away at the age of 56, so a, kind of a crushing blow to the to the prog rock world. I, I know that they, these guys were not um, necessarily on the front of your radar, but still sad news nonetheless. Yeah, and it's never never fun hearing that about anybody. Um, so, yeah, uh, condolences out to um, his family. Yeah, no, no question about that. And a little bit of a lighter news, uh, a very cool tour has been announced for North America. I, I have to say that if one good thing to come out of uh, all the last two years or so was the fact that tours are coming fast and furious at this point. It just seems like every day something else is being announced. This is a uh, dual tour that starts next March with Leprous and the Ocean, um, two prog power alums and two bands that I happen to thoroughly enjoy. This is a show that I, I definitely want to check out. It, it kicks off March 1st in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, they're out for just over a month. They end the tour in Chicago. I know they're coming to New York City on uh, March the 9th. I'm definitely going to make a point of going to this. Um, two different bands, but I can see how a tour together would definitely work. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with the ocean. I, I will probably be making myself familiar with them, um, you know, as they're supposed to play at Prog Power next year. But uh, Leprous is a band that I still sometimes am shocked that I enjoy as much as I do, just because uh, not the accessible it, prog we talk about, right? This, this is a right. little more avant garde. It's weird, um, but I, I I and I find myself always enjoying whatever they do, and I've seen them live, and they put on a. a, a an awesome show live. I mean, uh, very cool. I, I might have to go out of my way to, uh, to check this out. Um, I just, I found something real quick that I just wanted to mention because I, I know I always talk about how I'm such a, uh, a, a music video nerd. And, and I, I just saw that, um, there was, they auctioned off the mask from the, from quiet riots, metal health album. Um, which, uh, if, if, if you, um, if you remember the music video for Bang Your Head, um, there's like a guy in a padded room wearing the mask that you see on the cover of that album. And um, it ended up uh, selling for $50,000. I'm so happy. So. so happy you mentioned this because I actually had it in my notes and I was going to forget. I thought that was so cool. I mean, those one of a kind things are really, really interesting. And I know that it was done for, um, as part of this like rock and roll auction. And there was other memorabilia from the Zeppelin, from Zeppelin and the Beatles and, uh, Eric Clapton and all these other guys. But yeah, the, 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 the mental health, the mental health mask, $50,000, which is kind of a nice, uh, one off, if you will. I, I, I thought that was really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Well, compare that to, a Gibson Les Paul custom 80th birthday electric guitar with the custom serial number for uh, Paul McCartney's birth year went for only seventy six hundred dollars more. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know that's, what that says. I don't know if that's an indictment against Paul McCartney or if uh, Quiet Riot is wildly underrated in, in some circles, but um, fascinating nonetheless. Um, but I have to ask you, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of the month. We obviously have our, uh, show picked out for the first of December or the first week of December, but you get to cram another one in here. And I'm, I'm very curious to hear what you're going to choose. Yeah. Um, I had a, a few things in mind for going forward, but being that it's a holiday week, I kind of wanted to go with something that I think the both of us already know pretty well. Um, just so that, you know, we don't have to like, step away from turkey dinner on Thursday to go listen to something that we're not as familiar with. So um, fair enough. I, I was scrolling through and, and there's just an album that I absolutely love. We've sort of discussed this artist, but not particularly as a solo artist. Uh, and uh, I guess just to uh, come out right out and say it, um, I want to talk about Luca Tirilli's uh, original first solo album king of the nordic twilight um when this album was released rhapsody uh was only known as rhapsody at the time had only released two albums up until that point and um i just remember getting this album and being like completely blown away by it and i haven't listened to it in a while um not since about over about a year and a half ago was the last time 
I listened to it, but uh, I know that you're a fan of the album as well. And I just thought it, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, of a, uh, a layup, I guess, but I think it'll be fun to talk about. I, I'll say this. I have always thought that this was the best album Luca Turilli ever put out. And I don't know if I'll still feel this way, but the reality is to me, this is better than the Rhapsody stuff. And I always thought that this album was just like his, his best work. I don't know if it's going to hold up. I don't know. You know, I obviously we've, we've discussed Rhapsody on the show and, and with good reason. Um, that was kind of a, a nice journey into the past. This will be as well. I haven't listened to this in a long time. So excellent choice. Um, it, it's, 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 it, it'll provide a nice contrast and a nice counterpoint to the Rhapsody. The Rhapsody episode that we did um, a couple of months ago. So good choice. We'll get to that in, in due time. Um, it'll it'll also be a nice contrast to dissection. So um, we'll go from there. We'll have we're a we're going to stay treat. in the snow, but we're going to make it. It's going to be a little more upbeat this time around. A l- little bit, little bit to say the least. Um, have a nice uh, a nice album picked out for the first week in December, and then I'll, I'll come back with something the following week. So uh, thanks for indulging me with some um, melodic black metal, and I will talk to you soon, bud. Yeah, I was trying to rack my brain on something that I could pick that like would throw you off, but I don't know that anything that like that exists. So, <laughs> well, hey, you'd be surprised. I think that you could definitely find some stuff. There, you, you, you've you've thrown me some stuff that I I, I um that I've never heard. So they they're out there. It may just be uh, you may just have to dig a little bit deeper. Well, I'm sure we'll get there. Alrighty, well, have a good uh, one, but I yeah. will talk to you soon. All right, take care.